This is an artist's concept of what it's like to be under a psychedelic drug based on descriptions from people who have been there. Like everyone else, we were horrified to learn recently that the Army and the CIA were using LSD on unwitting human guinea pigs, people who didn't know they had been given LSD until they experienced frightening and sometimes fatal symptoms. So we set out to learn more about psychedelic drugs, and the trail led us to the Maryland Psychiatric Research Center near Baltimore. It is not the first time CBS News had been there. Some years ago, we went there to observe neurotics and alcoholics being treated with LSD. What we found this time surprised us. Basically, I feel pretty good. This man is not a neurotic or an alcoholic. He is a terminal cancer patient. His name is Kenneth Pugh. He is only 39 years old. He is married. That's his wife, Joe, at his side. He is the father of two teenage sons. Until two years ago, he was a robust Baltimore welder. I have this hard driving pain. Uh, it's almost impossible to sleep. This is his last in a series of therapy sessions preparing him for psychedelic drugs, drugs that will open his mind make him better able to cope with the physical pain that racks his body and the mental anguish that afflicts his mind as he wrestles with the prospect of dying young, of leaving a wife and two children behind. Doctors here believe he must express those fears and anxieties to himself and to his family. They believe that psychedelic drugs combined with psychotherapy make that expression possible. Stay with it, Sandy Todd. He's a kid. really doing is trying to, to help dying people to live. Okay. And in a sense, that's, that includes all of us and all, all people. The major goal is to enhance the quality of life in whatever time is left. Kenneth Pugh is now being rehearsed for the mind-expanding drug session the next day, a rehearsal that includes having him talk through the kind of music that will be used to heighten the experience and to obliterate the outside world. Careful preparation such as this, say the doctors, is absolutely essential in using hallucinogens. The research center superintendent, Dr. Albert Curlin, explains why such rehearsal and strict control are necessary. We've had these recent disclosures of the Army and the CIA using the drug on unsuspecting, quote, volunteers, which resulted in more than one suicide and other subjects becoming violent, experiencing recurring nightmares and so forth. First of all, how can you be sure that your patients will not experience the same thing? Uh, an extremely important difference is that in our particular setting, before a patient is given the drug, he is thoroughly briefed on a number of things that may happen to him during the drug experience. Furthermore, he's not exposed to the drug experience until he's established a comfortable and secure relationship with the psychotherapist. Kenneth Pugh has established that relationship. Now, less than 24 hours after his final preparation, he returns to the center, ready to begin his psychedelic odyssey. Researchers here used to use pure LSD on patients. Now they use similar, though faster-acting, hallucinogenic drugs. Mr. Pugh takes a pill. Ten minutes later, he gets an injection. Only one contains the actual psychedelic. For research reasons, neither he nor we know which. Who are you going to load me up today? <laughs> <laughs> We're going to give you the best you we sleep? got to give you. Let me tell you. You sleep for 30 years. It might feel like that, as you know. It'll still be the 4th of December when you come back. This afternoon. I certainly hope so. The drug begins to take effect within minutes. The trip will last more than four hours. In sharp contrast to what does happen to a person on an unchartered trip on psychedelic drugs, you will see no wild reaction here. That's because Kenneth Few is not taking this trip alone, because he has been thoroughly prepared for what to expect, because he knows his therapist will be at his side throughout the day. So you will see in Kenneth Few little outward difference. The difference is inside. Tremendous light.
tremendous sound and a burning mm. until we finally had a finished crystal. This film, recommended by the National Institute of Drug Abuse, is an attempt to recreate a psychedelic trip for those of us who have never been on one. It's all blackness at first, and all of a sudden it's just like like Panavision, it just opens up. I had no bad experiences whatsoever, none. I had nothing to fear. I didn't see horrible animals or gargoyles or anything of this nature. I heard beautiful music. I saw beautiful scenery. The sky exploded into millions and millions of colors and lights. My first encounter, when I went into this world, I was only seven years old. I was a child. It took me that far back at first. We played as we did when we were children. At one point, uh, I found myself staying on top of a mountain. There were three people there, and I was one, and Christ was the other and the Holy Spirit was the other, and we were standing with our arms around each other. This, to me, was a very moving experience. It uh, gave me a feeling of everything's okay. It's all going to end well. I've seen these things before. Mm -hmm. Like those little women that look like a spider a spider's web. Mm. Everything was a higher volume. Would you like to describe where you find yourself? I was just in a Spanish, like an outdoor Spanish cafe. Mm. A young lady sitting at the into the cafe, mm. playing the guitar and singing. How do you feel in that scene? Very relaxed. It's a relaxed situation. Not many people. Mm. It's outdoors. Things are very delicate here. Mm. In what way delicate? Like webs. Mm -hmm. People walk on spider webs. Mm -hmm. I'm one of them. Mm -hmm. Does it feel like a lot of time has gone by? Yeah. It seems like I'm asleep for hours and... Not asleep, but... I'm not a dream, it seems like many, many hours going by. So many things have happened that uh, it's hard to recall them all. Look at your rose. I never took time to look at a rose that close. As the drug begins to wear off, Mr. Pugh is encouraged to explore his feelings by looking at photographs of himself and his family. That was a graduation picture from high school. Mm. If you'd look at, take a good look into your own eyes there if you can. Mm -hmm. How do you feel about that, that young son? Oh, no. Seems like so long ago he's yeah. disappeared. Seem like he's around anymore. You as you have said yourself, you're going to die, as we all are. Why go through this treatment? Well, there are several reasons. One, it's taught me to appreciate life a little more. It stimulated me, I think, to uh, see things that I didn't see you before. It's kind of taught me to kind of stop and smell the roses. I think I feel more relaxed. 
it's helped me to cope with the pain that I have. I have pain constantly. Have you found it easier to communicate that to your wife and to other members of your family since the treatment, or yes, has it been much changed? we have become much more open. My sons have uh, accepted the fact that maybe I'll get well and maybe I won't. There's no guarantee that the drug treatment or the chemotherapy and the operations that were done will be successful. There's no guarantee. When we found out that Ken had cancer and we had decided that we would be very open with each other and nothing would be hid from each other. But in the last, I'd say six months, we were both trying to protect each other. We kept telling each other, oh, everything's going to be all right. And since the drug treatment, we've been able to look at, there's two sides of this situation that, well, maybe we still have hope, but that uh, Ken may die. The boys I'm always concerned about. I think that's why they don't enter into these dreams. I protect them and keep them back. Keep that from happening. Feel you know, some concerns if they can make it in life. Maybe that's that's some of it. She'd like to be a, around for a goodly number of years yet to mm. give them the guidance you have to offer. That's what I'm hoping for. Yeah. I have the years left to to give them the guidance that they need. I know that Joe will carry on where I leave off. There is considerable debate among researchers in other places about whether, and if so, how much psychedelic drugs help people such as Kenneth Few. He, however, has no doubt. Now I can't say how my death will be. Uh, I don't know if it'll be slow or fast. Will I be in a coma or awake? I will have to accept death as it is. Many people, perhaps most, contemplate death at least some of the time as a terror, if nothing else, a terror of the unknown. I don't get a sense that you feel that way about it. No, I don't, no, I don't have this terror about death. Uh, I feel it's part of living. It's something that we have to face, all of us. We couldn't leave this story without a note of caution. If you're tempted to try this on your own, we remind you again that the man you have just seen under the influence of a psychedelic was in a controlled situation and was extensively prepared for the experience.